Hello everyone, welcome to Scorcher Toys at AnyMoon.com's review of several 160 scale VF1J Max and Miria toys. In this video, we're going to be looking at the Yamato 160 version 2 toys released in October 2009 for 12,800 yen. We're going to be comparing them to Arcadia's Miria released in August 2017 and Max released in December 2017. Both of those toys retailed for 21,800 yen. Finally, we'll compare those releases to Arcadia's website exclusive premium finish Miria and Max toys released in February and August 2018 respectively, retailing for 27,864 yen after tax. Before we jump in, a quick history lesson is in order. Yamato originally produced a line of 160 scale VF1 toys that was not perfect transformation, and this line included Max and Miria. Those are the toys we know today as the 160 V1, and we are not talking about those. Yamato later produced a huge line of 160 scale version 2 toys that included numerous different schemes and variants, but I'm going to stick to just the ones I've already outlined. Yamato ultimately went defunct, Arcadia picked up the mold, jacked up the price, and has been producing the more recent reissues. I could continue the history lesson to explain that Robotech is the product of three original Japanese shows, including Macross, and that the rights holders of Macross and Robotech don't play nice with each other. But all you really need to take away from this is that the toys I'm discussing today are generally not available outside of Japan, so if you really want them, you're going to have to hunt specialty import shops. If you're shopping for Robotech toys, Transformers, or just about anything else, I normally grab that stuff from Big Bad Toy Store, and you should do the same. Click the link in the comments below to shop for plenty of cool stuff and help out this channel in the process. The Yamato releases came in boxes that don't have flip top lids, but they do have congruent art to each other that's kind of cool. The regular Arcadia releases feature corresponding art and flip top lids, but are otherwise very similar in quality to the Yamato releases. The premium finish boxes lack art, are only differentiated by text, have no flip top lids, and are otherwise the same quality as the other releases. Opening the boxes reveal the toy in a plastic tray that also includes four sets of TV style missiles, four sets of Do You Remember Love style missiles, one pilot figure, one gun, two pairs of TV style fixed posed hands, two display stand adapters for the launch arm display stand that was sold separately, one nose cone holder for the removable nose cone gimmick, under that tray, there's a second tray that contains the fast packs and six reaction missiles. Continuing under that tray, if you have an Arcadia version of the toy, you'll also find a plastic baggie full of option parts. Option parts are left and right side covers, a neck cavity filler, and a neck cavity filler with a pilot seat, all for use with the Batroid mode of the toy. Finally, flipping the cardboard tray over, you'll find instructions and stickers, except the premium finish versions, since what would be stickers there have already been painted on the toy. So yes, the Arcadia toy is essentially just a reissue of the Yamato toy, but there are a few very minor differences, and I'm going to start the review by discussing those. Uh, first, I'll tell them apart. I'm going to take off the articulated hand that comes with the toy. Uh, you can see it's got a thumb, trigger finger. These fingers are all locked together wrist and it spins around on there. That's all we're gonna have to talk about with the hands. Here is the fixed post hand. Both toys come with that. And now it's a little easier to tell the Arcadia apart from the Yamato. You can see the Arcadia also very stark white. The Yamato is slightly less vibrant in its white. Still white, but less vibrant. Uh, the Arcadia toy also comes with option parts. Option parts are cavity fillers. So here we can see I've got one installed over here. I do not have it on the Yamato toy because the Yamato toy didn't come with it. So there's a big gap there. To install the cavity filler on the side, the side filler, we are just going to pop the back up a little bit. And then we take our little side filler piece and we slide it in there. Now, obviously this isn't perfect transformation. And honestly, I probably wouldn't use these pieces very much on my own, but 
it's a nice option for those people that have them. And again, that's why it's called an option part. So there we go. Uh, not sure I've got it in perfectly, but you get the idea. There's the cavity filler there. You also get a cavity filler for behind the head, which is this piece here. So we can just slide that in. And now a little point about, well, a couple things. There is a lot of painted plastic up here. So using this piece can very easily cause paint wear. So something to be aware of. Now I'm gonna put that in, probably scrape some paint off, and then I can close this door up here. Now you could use this hook on either of these toys to really lock that backpack tight in position. I don't recommend you do it. It creates a lot of pressure on the vertical stabilizers and these little bumps hit the vertical stabilizers. You get a little dot out of it. So I usually just say that is good enough for me and I think you should do the same. So that's the neck cavity filler. We can pop this out and there is another piece that is that neck cavity filler, but this time with the pilot seat in it, like we saw early in the Macross television show. So we can plug this in. Oops, that little piece is not glued on, it just fits on. So there we go. Let's get that on. All right, so now we've got that piece in position. We've got the head all the way forward. We can take our pilot figure and we can simulate the pilot coming out of the top for whatever reason the pilot would be doing that. And those are the option parts that only come with the Arcadia toys. So for some people, the option parts might be a big deal. What might be a bigger deal is that they've added screw covers to the Arcadia toy. So if I turn this toy around and we look at the arms first, there are now little red stickers that have been applied over the screws on the back of the arms. And the Arcadia toy comes with additional stickers, I'm assuming in case you have to pry these off to do some sort of maintenance, you then have new stickers you can put on top of those screws. Less maintenance likely are the screw covers in the leg. So now you can see there's a screw cover there and there, and there's also one up, you can get that, uh, up here on the thigh, which is not as easy to see, but here we go, that right there. So. You can see some screw covers there. If we look at the Yamato version of the toy, nothing doing there. We have screw, screw, and another screw right up here. So screw covers now added to the Arcadia toy in an effort to make the toy a little bit more presentable. Some people are gonna like that. Some people are not gonna care. And other people might actually dislike it if they think that they might have to get inside that leg for some repair at some point. So something to consider. The most obvious difference when you pull these toys out of the tray is the Yamato toy has a rainbow canopy effect. Now Yamato did stop using this effect after the Miria release because the QC failure rate was just too high on it, which is a shame because when it works well, like it's doing on my Yamato release, uh, it looks really nice and it looks a little bit plain in comparison on the Arcadia, but uh, it certainly looks fine on the Arcadia. The other wrinkle that creates is if you have a bunch of old Yamato toys and a few Arcadia toys, you have this variance between some with rainbow canopies and some without, which is a bit of a bummer. Another difference that uh, Arcadia claims to have done is that this hook on the Yamato toys they say it frequently got loose. I only saw it got loose if you actually used it against the neck plate. They say it's less likely to get loose on the Arcadia toy. It doesn't really feel any difference. It, it, uh, different. It doesn't look like they've made any changes uh, to the physical mold. So I don't know what they did that they think that that's true, but perhaps it is. And you can test it out on your own. I'm gonna try to not get any floppy hooks anyways. Now, another difference in uh, form here and actually this one works quite well on the Yamato toy there the extension at the knee is incredibly tough so you have to apply a ton of pressure to pop that joint extended and then that's what allows you to get that full sweep of the legs which is uh, what makes scare walk mode look natural and nice as it does not over here on the Arcadia right now but with the Arcadia toy they made it so less pressure was necessary to pop that down. And it still hooks into place perfectly fine. 
uh, but it's just not as scary to do, which is good to see. And then there you can see again, the only real difference between these toys visibly here being that canopy and the screw covers, if you could notice them. Arcadia also tried to address a few issues that were popping up with Yamato toys. First, the gun. This is the Yamato gun, and it slides out very smoothly. The grip comes down, uh, but it was an issue for some people that it kind of recessed a little bit too easily. Mine seems to lock into place just fine. This is one of those issues that some people might have seen more than others. The Arcadia gun, uh, again, nice and smooth. The pulling out the grip is definitely a little stiffer uh, and it seems to lock into place a little bit more securely. So that might just be mold degradation that they cleaned up, but that is something they allegedly changed. Also, the intake covers, these parts right here, they said, Arcadia did, that they made them sit a little bit more flush. I don't really see it. They look exactly identical on my toys. Now that just might mean they are a little more flush than they were on the last release that this particular mold used. Uh, but if you compare Yamato to Arcadia here, they look the same. Now a little trick for you, since they do sit so flush as it is, you can pop off one usually pretty easily and then you can use the other one. You apply a little pressure on the bottom to create a little gap at the top and then you can use this piece that you've popped off to kind of fish off that second piece there and reveal the intake fans so that's good now one more fit issue on the Yamato toys again not particularly my uh, Miria toy the backpack can flip over fairly easily mine's actually pretty stiff uh, but on some toys, you can just kind of flop this over, and that made people think that that's just the way to transform the toy. Uh, on the Arcadia toy, they have definitely tightened up the tolerances for that. So to transform, and I do have a full guide on this, it is really important that you press down there on the hinge before you fold it over so you don't risk breaking anything. One other revision that Arcadia claimed to have made is that the hard points on the wings, which you can see I've attached reaction missiles on my Yamato here, they feature this locking mechanism. And what ends up happening occasionally on the old Yamato toys is that you actually shear the hard po point off entirely trying to get a missile on there. For whatever reason, the tolerances, something just doesn't work out right. And so the hard point gets sheared off. Arcadia said, hey, we've reinforced that, we fixed it, it fits better, it's not gonna be a problem. Uh, but, and this is how you do it, you just take the toy, you put it on sideways, and then you twist. So that is how it's supposed to work, but and this is what ended up happening to me when I put mine on, that hard point just popped right off. So that issue that they said they had resolved Still clearly an issue, and again, my sample size is small, but it seems like a lot of people have been complaining about their Max toy losing hard points. So uh, buyer beware if you're gonna be using these hard points to install any of the included weaponry. And one last difference between the Yamato and the Arcadia. Arcadia claims when they were doing the super parts that they made these back parts attach more securely. Uh, you can see I got a little bit of a wobble there. Uh, and a little bit of a wobble on that side too. So again, this is one of those improvements that I chalk up to potentially being a little more talk or, you know, still this had wobble, no doubt about it. Um, maybe again, after Yamato had done their Max toy, after they had done their Myriad toy, several more releases after that, maybe that mold got a little more wobbly for later toys and Arcadia has tightened it up in comparison to those, but the net result ends up being just very similar to what Yamato did on their Max and Myria toys. Okay, so now you know all of the differences between the Arcadia toy and the Yamato toy, but what about the differences between the Arcadia regular release and the Arcadia premium finish? The Arcadia premium finish is a regular release toy that has additional paint applications. It was only available through the Arcadia website and it has 
lots and lots of painted on details. So let's see if we can get this in focus. And you can see lots of no step signs all over the toy's wings and back. You get this little yellow emblem there. You get more emblems throughout here, up by the nose. You even get the pilot name on there. More emblems up towards the front. If you saw my Hikaru VF1S premium finish review, transforming to Batroid mode, you really wanna be very careful with that particular emblem right there. You get some more paintwork here. You get some more paintwork uh, down below, well, there, there. And even the gun has that, what would have been a sticker up in the front painted on. So those are all cool. You get the Prometheus little badging on the vertical stabilizer. So that's what it is. You get a lot more exterior painted on detail on both the core Valk and the super parts. Just like the underlying Valk, the super parts get the premium treatment on the premium version as well. There's additional paint applications, the UN Spacey Kite being the most obvious among them, but you also get that white badging of the type of weaponry involved, the no step signs along the top, there's some black text here. There was also black text on the leg. I don't know if you'd seen that on the Max toy, but it's there. There's white text again on the leg and more black text there. Now, both the regular premium and Yamato versions, they all feature this removable uh, armor pieces and the premium finish version doesn't really benefit in any way once you remove the armor panels. So that is the detail work within the leg, which is pretty sexy. And again, it's the same exactly on any release. Moving to the top, we have this missile boom that can be removed, revealing those micro missiles that were inside. And we can pry up this piece here to expose engine detail, which is pretty nice. So that's standard, regardless of which version of the Yamato V2 or Arcadia toy you have. Flipping the toy under, we have landing gear that are integrated. Now, I did find on my Arcadia toys, the rubber wheels pop off a little bit more frequently on me, but obviously that's fine. You just close those up. The gun can be stowed, as you saw, without dragging on the ground, but its clearance is incredibly tight. And again, you have that premium finish sticker there. Front landing gear has the articulated tow bar. The landing gear are metal, the wheels or the tires are rubber. We can, it's kind of a tight fit, but we can close that up too. There you go. Now, another thing that is the same between premium finish Yamato or Arcadia releases are the pilot figures. So there is no, nothing to this figure that makes it clear that Miria is a woman. So that's perhaps a downside there, but otherwise the pilot figure looks clean Premium finish exactly the same as a regular release or a Yamato release. The fast packs of the premium version also have forearm armor text on the outside and the inside. And here you can see this is what it looks like in gear walk mode. And you can hopefully get a feel for how much that additional paint applications is worth to you. Now we could also take these aside and we could take a look at the toy without the fast packs on. Again, premium finish on the right. Standard version on the left in gear walk mode without the fast packs this time. You can get a feel for what that additional paint application is worth to you. Now, from any sort of distance, it does get a little bit more difficult to see. If you're the kind of person who doesn't enjoy putting stickers on but would like the markings, uh, it would take a long time to sticker a toy up as well as the premium finished version. So maybe that's something worth considering. Now, gear walk mode for these toys is really cool. It locks together very well, as did fighter mode. The shoulders have an armor that kind of pivots out and away, which gets you the clearance for the arms to work in gear walk mode with those wings and still give you some articulation there. Obviously, I've got the fixed posed hands on the toy now. You've got a good sweep outward. You get a good sweep forward with the legs. So you can get some pretty aggressive poses and have fun with your toy in this mode. You're now experts at the differences between the Yamato toys, the Arcadia toys, and the Arcadia premium finish toys. So I'm gonna move on with a fairly standard review at this point. The super parts are nice in that they don't inhibit articulation at all in Batroid mode. The big downside to them in my view 
is that they do have this connector piece on the backpack that kind of comes underneath here. And that means you have to remove that backpack section for transformation from gear walk mode to batroid mode. Not a big deal, just a little bit of a bummer. These boosters here are also articulated. Uh, otherwise, the big thing here that you would really care about for a toy like this is does everything stay together when I've got the super parts on? And the answer to that question is yeah, you can have everything just fine. You can play with this toy. Things are not gonna go popping off on you. So that is all very good to see. And you can get some really impressive poses with very little effort and have yourself a lot of fun with those super parts on. I mentioned in the intro that one of the included pieces was a attachment for the nose cone, removable nose cone gimmick. So what you'd have to do is take one of your other toys, flip it upside down, or if it's in care walk mode or something else, just deal with it. Gonna pop the head off, and then you can just pull the nose cone forward. And now you have, obviously, a toy without a nose cone. You could take that nose cone then, fold in that piece, and here I have Hikaru just chilling in the section that has been removed. We could take this now, and it fishes in uh, between, let's get it on the other side. Fishes in like so. So there you go. Now there is an arm attachment piece above the canopy. A little bit funky, but you can kind of see where this was cool for that one scene with the VF1D early in the show. And then you can attachment, attach it to the arm of a Batroid toy. Or if we were in fighter mode, this could attach underneath fighter mode. Uh, it doesn't really give you any clearance to land the vehicle, but something kind of cool, something this toy can do. Whether or not you ever get any mileage out of it with a Max and Miria toy is another question entirely. All right, you've seen some examples of what this toy can do from an articulation standpoint, but let's go through it a little more thoroughly. First, the head, left and right, up and down at the neck, and then there's that swivel inside that also gives you a little bit more clearance. You have the shoulders all the way around. You have the ability to pivot out at the shoulder, twist point at the shoulder, double jointed elbow that comes way up and you saw that the hands are articulated and they twist to a point. There is no waist, but you do have ball joints at the hip that allow you to cock in, cock out, sweep out and sweep in. And then you can come way back with the leg, but you're going to run into the wings. So you're probably going to want to go like that or like that. And then you have that gear walk joint underneath that you could certainly use in Batroid mode to help you get that clearance if you've got that wing down, obviously. And then moving down, we do have the twist point at the knee you saw in gear walk joint, as well as that extension at the knee. When extended, you do get a little bit better range of movement uh, than without although it's very minor. You're talking about about 90 degrees of movement there. And then you saw that the foot comes out and can come back and forth. There's a little bit of a rock, but nothing that's really gonna give you any playability out of it. Um, might help you get the balance you need in an awkward pose. Uh, but usually that's what we're talking about when we're talking about difficulties in Batroid modes. It's more like just getting the thing to balance. Uh, the fast packs don't really cause any issues with the balance and it does look like a lot of weight on the back, but things work out pretty well. Now, one thing, this is the Arcadia toy. Here is that fast pack arm armor. I don't know if you noticed it before, but there are no screw covers on the fast pack arm covers. So that's a little bit of a weakness considering they put them on the forearms of the toy. The Yamato 160 version two has been the best VF1 toy for about 10 years now. So it's pretty easy for me to recommend either the Yamato or the Arcadia, but it's worth noting again, I did have that hard point shear off earlier. Uh, I did break this hinge on my Yamato toy, which I haven't really mentioned. Now I do have a transformation guide. Hopefully watching that will help you avoid making that same break, but the backpack tolerances are super tight. So it's pretty easy to imagine lots of people out there having broken that hinge. Uh, which is a bit of a bummer. You can glue it back together, but it might fail because again, those tolerances are so tight. Another area to look out for is these uh, areas right here. It's white paint over red plastic or blue plastic. 
And there's little pegs on top of the chest that hold the chest together there. And then when you transform the toy, those pegs drag on that white plastic so you can get a lot of chipping that way. Uh, I've been pretty fortunate on all four of these toys. Uh, I didn't bother transforming my premium finish toy because I don't want to ruin the premium finish. And that is a good point. While it's easy to recommend these toys, the premium finish versions of the toy are gonna be extremely expensive. And when you do have sensitive paint like that area up here, it seems like you're not gonna be incredibly willing to transform the toy, which then begs the question of how much value you're really getting out of that premium finish toy. And that goes even further with Bandai about to step to the plate with their own DX VF1 releases. So if you wanna know the best possible toy on the market right now, it's these guys. If you are just looking for a VF1 toy, you don't need something right this moment, it's probably worth it to wait on the fence and see what Bandai brings out and if that appeals to you. Check out anymoon.com for my full article, subscribe, and as always, thanks for watching.